the entrance antiphon on this memorial of Saints Cyril and Methodius, monk and bishop. These are holy men who became friends of God, glorious heralds of divine truth. Happy Valentine's Day. St. Valentine has not been unsainted. Uh, it's just that we, um, the church from time to time cleans up the calendar and clean up in a sense that, you know, there are more and more saints and some uh, we only have certain legends and other minimal facts about. Um, so the church tends to give priority to those that we know more about and have greater ability to inspire after, you know, through the generations. So, um, you know, we can ask the intercession of St. Valentine, but especially today we'll commemorate these two missionaries and theologians who went to the Slavic nations in the ninth century, encountered various difficulties, and uh, we'll reflect a little bit more on their life and their mission today. Saints Cyril and Methodius um, were brothers. Cyril was um, born Constantine, and he took the name Cyril later when he became a monk and died only 50 days later in Rome. Methodius continued uh, their missionary efforts for 16 more years, but as they began their ministry, as they went to the Slavic nations before the current nation states that we know existed, um, they were going to a people that didn't um, have an alphabet. They were trying to share with them the Christian faith, so first they had to learn their language, then create an alphabet, which is still largely influencing the Slavic nations and even Russia um, using Greek letters and such and then to translate the Bible and to develop a liturgy. So, I mean, again, talk about being an entrepreneur, talk about that, that missionary spirit to really build from nothing. And imagine that the complaint you get from your next door neighbors, um, the Frankish bishops and such in modern day Germany areas, like, wait, but they should be speaking Latin in the liturgy. That was the complaint. And they reported them for heresy. So Cyril and Methodius had to go back to Rome to defend themselves against accusations of heresy from their bishops, who, by the way, also claimed that they were stepping into their territory because those nations were under their jurisdiction as German bishops. Hmm. Now, I don't know, maybe there were some saintly German bishops at the time. I don't know the history correlation. But they came to Rome, were vindicated, went back, continued their liturgy and such, and had been welcomed by a previous emperor, but then emperors change, and the new sheriff in town didn't also had issues with them, and uh, they suffered and again had to go back to Rome to defend themselves. Well, at least Methodius Cyril had died at this time. And again were vindicated and went back. So here's my point. Uh, I think that Cyril and Methodius are great examples of patrons of being faithful to the Lord in times of political and ecclesial disruption and division. But I want to warn all of us here that that's a challenge in every place and every generation. Well, St. Dominic has a media studio. We should get one. Well, St. John's has a school. Maybe we should get one. Well, I live in this neighborhood, therefore, but that, that person should go to this church, not that church. The only question we should be asking is, is that decision or are those behaviors serving the gospel? Are they leading people to Jesus? Is it fulfilling the Great Commission? And yet, we are a big institution with so many policies and procedures and customs and things that we have begun to inherit as gospel. And yet, by enforcing them, it can inhibit that mission. For example, those bishops saying, no, but they're doing that mission in my jurisdiction. Well, are you missionizing those people? Well, no, not exactly. We've got a lot going on over here. Well, they are. And they're creating an alphabet. And they're developing a liturgy to bring the good news to people who have not heard it and are not living it. So who are you to claim jurisdiction? You should be saying, Cyril Mathuris, how can we help you? How can we assist you? Thank you for doing what we have not done yet. 
So if you're waiting for a politician that you like and agrees with you to start praying for them, if you're waiting for bishops and priests to make decisions that you want to make before you work with them and support them and pray for them, if you take offense of some of the things that we're doing differently than other parishes or how we've historically done it, it's not... It's always been done this way, but we're doing it a different way. That's a problem for you or for your neighbor. The question I ask you to ask yourself is, is it serving the gospel? And again, we may not fully agree about a certain decision. That's okay. But are we going to let it harden our hearts and lead to divisions and factions? Or are we going to do the best with what we have in all of the political and ecclesiastical challenges and divisions and lines and boundaries and policies and procedures and personalities and temperaments and let that harden our hearts or are we going to persevere in making sure the gospel stays first and right here first and foremost St. Cyril and Methodius pray for us Let us stand and pray. Through the intercession of Saints Cyril and Methodius, we pray for all missionaries and that the church may always put forth the missionary option that everything that we do and all of the rules that we have go to serve the gospel. We pray to the Lord. We pray especially for um, the Christians, um, both of the Eastern Church and the Roman Church and the Slavic nations and in Russia for unity, for strength, for ecumenism, and for harmony between the churches and the nation states of those areas of the world, we pray to the Lord. For the easing of tensions between Russia and Ukraine, and for peace in all other areas of conflict, and for the safety of all military and peacekeepers, we pray to the Lord. We pray on this Feast of St. Valentine's as well, for all married couples, that they may be deepened in their married love with Christ at the very center. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the success and the fruitfulness of our uh, relationship ministries, for the Adventures in Marriage Workshop, and that these may be opportunities to evangelize the churched and the unchurched. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who find uh, today to be a difficult day, for widows and widowers, for the divorced and separated, for those who are longing to meet their spouse, that they may find consolation in the cross of Jesus Christ, their first love. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the healing of all of the sick and for abundant fruitfulness of healing at the upcoming healing night on Thursday at St. Dominic. Let us pray to the Lord. For the eternal repose of all of our beloved dead, for all who have died recently, for those we hold in our hearts, and those in all of the holy souls in purgatory who are counting on our prayers and penances, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for raising up saints like Cyril and Methodius, who persevered through all sorts of challenges and sufferings. May we be inspired by their example and persevere in your love today. We ask this through Christ our Lord.